In this video, I'll be providing an overview of the power steering system used on the Porsche 944, along with some of its common issues and typical parts replacement costs. Let's start with a breakdown of the components in the system and their location around the engine compartment. Fluid is added to the system through the reservoir located on the passenger side of the engine bay, and there are supply and return lines running from the reservoir down to the components below. The supply line leads to the top of the power steering pump that is driven by a V-belt and a pulley connected to the crankshaft. The outlet line from the side of the pump leads to the power steering rack, where fluid circulates with the assistance of a compensating line to equalize pressure in the assembly. Fluid exits the steering rack through a return line that connects to a cooler line positioned below the passenger headlight assembly, where it makes a few loops and is ultimately sent back to the fluid reservoir in the engine compartment. As far as issues go, there's nothing inherently wrong with the power steering system used on the 944, provided that it's well maintained. They tend to have a bad reputation, however, for a variety of leaks that occur throughout the system, but that's largely a result of the now 35 to 40 year old seals in the pumps and steering racks. So let's take a look at some of the maintenance items and typical problems that can arise. The fluid reservoir contains a built-in filter in the bottom and it can't be replaced without swapping out the entire unit. So if it becomes clogged by debris in the system and the pump begins to exhibit a groaning sound, it may be time to replace the reservoir and combined filtration mechanism, which will run about $35. Similarly, if the fluid in the system has turned a dirty brown color, that's also a good sign that the reservoir and fluid should be replaced. Somewhat counterintuitively, this power steering system calls for use of Dexron 3 automatic transmission fluid, which will present as a transparent red coloring when clean. You'll want to avoid using anything labeled as actual power steering fluid, as well as leak stop products with this particular system, as they can end up damaging the seals and fouling up the hydraulic lines. While the soft hydraulic lines in the system tend to seep fluid from their connection points, they generally hold up well over time, with the exception of the early version hose that runs from the reservoir to the pump, as it can collapse internally, which results in increased steering effort and strain on the pump, and in those cases it can be replaced with the updated hose version for about $40. When replacing or rebuilding the steering rack, it's also a good time to replace the lower lines to the rack, where some aftermarket options can be found for a little over $100 on the supply line and about $200 for the genuine Porsche return line. The power steering pump is a notorious place for leaks to develop, and they usually end up coating the front sway bar and lower portions of the engine with fluid. To remedy this, the pump can be replaced or rebuilt with a new seal kit. Renbay and Paragon products have some seal kit options for about $25, and it's not terribly difficult to perform a rebuild with some basic tools. The pumps can also be replaced with refurbished units for anywhere between $200 and $500, with Porsche's unit falling on the higher end. To remove the pump, the input and output lines will need to be disconnected, which will drain fluid from the reservoir and the pump. The outlet connection features a banjo bolt setup with two copper crush washers used to seal the fitting to the pump. These washers should be replaced every time the line is reconnected to the pump, Reusing the washers can result in leaks at the connection point or a broken banjo bolt. The bolts are hollowed out to allow fluid to pass through them, and the bolt heads can snap off when they're over-torqued beyond the factory specification of 22 foot-pounds. And if you end up encountering a broken bolt, they can be replaced for about $15. To remove the power steering pump, the two 13mm pivot points on the mounting bracket will need to be loosened prior to removing the V-belt. Next, the 13mm lock nuts on the turnbuckle can be released so that the belt can be removed. If the belt is cracked, worn, or fraying, it should be replaced, but can otherwise be reused and inspected annually for its condition, with replacement belts costing only about $10. With the belt out of the way, the adjustment bar can be disconnected and the nut and bolt at the front and rear mounting points removed. Finally, the metal sleeve on the front stud can be pushed forward so that the pump can be cleared away from the bracket. The power steering rack is another common source of fluid leaks in the system, where they typically present at the rubber boots, and if a significant amount of fluid is observed after pulling back the boots, the rack should be replaced or resealed. The racks can be rebuilt with a new seal kit for about $80, which requires removing the assembly from the car and completely disassembling and rebuilding the rack with all new seals. A failing rack can also be replaced with professionally rebuilt units for between $500 and $1,000. When removing the steering rack from the car, the tie rod ends will need to be disconnected from the steering knuckles, and the spline shaft on the steering gear disconnected from the intermediate steering shaft. This joint can be problematic in the removal process, especially if the connection has become oxidized over the years. The 13 mm nut and bolt will need to be removed from the U-joint, and then a cold chisel can be wedged into the slot cut in the side of the joint to loosen things up a bit. A long pry bar or a ball joint separator tool can then be used to disconnect the two parts, 
And if efforts don't prove successful here, you can always disconnect the steering shaft from its upper connection point below the brake booster, which should be less oxidized than the lower connection. It's a good idea to inspect these U-joints for play in between the two brackets, and if they're worn, the steering shaft can be replaced for around $130. With the steering rack out of the car, you may also want to replace the tie rods and the tie rod ends that can wear out over time. The rubber boots on the tie rod ends should be inspected at this point, and if they're dry, cracked, or crumbling, that's an indication that it may be time to replace the tie rod ends, which costs about $40 to $50 for a new set. On the back of the steering gear tower, there are some connection points for the hydraulic lines, and you may find that these are hex head bolts, which tend to strip out during removal. To replace these, Rembe offers a set of 12 millimeter banjo bolts that are a little bit easier to work with for about $20. The metal cooling line located in the front right corner of the car is another part that can occasionally get clogged up in the bends when incorrect fluids have been added to the system. In those cases, you may experience heavy steering and a noisy pump. If you suspect the cooler line is clogged, it can be disconnected, drained of fluid, and then compressed air can be forced through the line to clean it out. If the hard line is crimped or damaged, they can be replaced for about $330. Another common issue with the power steering system is that air can get occasionally trapped inside the steering rack, which will happen if the reservoir has been run dry due to heavy leaks from any components in the system, or when the system has been drained for maintenance and not properly bled of air when being refilled. Large air bubbles passing into the fluid system will feel like the power assist is jerking, especially when turning the wheel at low RPM. When refilling the system, fluid should be topped up to the fill line inside the reservoir, and then the engine run for just a few seconds and turn back off. The fluid can then be topped up and the process repeated. Once the fluid level is stable, the wheels can be turned lock to lock while the engine is running in order to move the trapped air through the rack and back up to the reservoir. A single quart of Dextron 3 ATF should be more than enough to get the fluid system topped up as the filling capacity is only 0.63 quarts of fluid. Well, that concludes the overview of the power steering system on the Porsche 944. And hopefully that's a good starting point to dig in and begin to diagnose any issues with the power steering on your car.